Today, I'm going to walk you through CloudGuard and its capabilities when it comes to serverless security through AWS. So our um, CloudGuard product looks at AWS Lambda as well as Azure functions, but today we are going to focus on AWS Lambda. So just going into the CloudGuard dashboard, uh, this dashboard is completely customizable. So there are a couple defaults, but the custom customization of the serverless platform really allows you to identify and create a single pane of glass where you can take action quickly for, for the pieces that matter. So just kind of giving you an example of the default. So here I can see the total number of alerts. I can quickly take action by clicking on the alerts by severity. So if I am in a bind, I want to take a look at first at these critical alerts here that are 21%. But then I can also have quick links of look, looking for trends. So here's just some examples. Functions with the most critical alerts, functions with the most findings, or even different alert types. So here is a whole list of functions that have permissive role issues that make it easy for my um, security team to address quickly and, and knock out and correct. But here we're going to be looking at a specific AWS Lambda function. So let me click on the workload protection section and then AWS Lambda function. And today we're focusing on AWS. And I want to look for the function that I have running right now for great reads. So I'm clicking on that function. And here, what I'm able to see is the Posture Explorer. So with the Posture Explorer, I want to be able to inspect at a glance all of the, the relevant information that is specific for that particular function. So here under the Posture Explorer, I can actually display all the functions and the events that are triggering those functions. So in this particular Lambda, I'm able to see the event source that's triggering the function, and I'm able to see that's an API gateway. One of the most important features that we have within CloudGuard is this whole concept of function self-protection. And function self-protection provides greater visibility into what the application code is doing and implements adaptive security detection and prevention for relevant attack types. So for example, it will apply input filtering on certain functions for event code or SQL injections, and then it'll auto protect and it gives you the ability to turn this on or off. Uh, we're going to leave it on for now, um, but it, it'll give you that ability to automatically protect um, everything. So as you can see, we have configuration scanning turned on, vulnerability scanning turned on, IAM hardening, and workload firewall to give the utmost protection to your, um, your Lambda function. And there's also a lightweight library that's included with the function, and it's locked and loaded when the function is first loaded. But it can also be inserted into functions through a web UI um, or during CICD using a simple plugin script. In addition, you have the ability to block on detect. And what this means is that if CloudGuard detects something that is a known OWASP attack type or a SQL injection or anomaly behavior, you can actually automate this process so that it'll block that call and that attack from happening instantly, uh, which saves your security team a lot of time from having to track all of these alerts. So next we're gonna move over to runtime protection. So in runtime protection, this is really considered your whitelist, if you will. So when we um, show what we've learned during runtime for the specific function, and this will allow you to have a, a view of what your general profile is for that function from a, a behavioral profiling perspective and a code analysis per, per, um, perspective. And as you can see, the profiling here is not complete because we just created this function um, but it is in progress. And so what you can see here are the files the function is accessing and, and that are whitelisted. You can also look at the APIs. So when uh, we show specific APIs are being called and then you see the network activity below that, it's important to understand that the analysis of the API is done in two phases. The first phase is through the um, management phase, which is called code analysis. For this function, um, the code analysis could, could show that both of the API calls that are authorized are used in the code. If we enable runtime protection on this function, we can actually verify if the APIs are actually being used in runtime. 
So for instance, maybe it's a runtime API call that's used and okay to use during DynamoDB, or maybe it's a runtime code analysis um, injection that's okay to use during an S3 um, API call. But all of this would be allocated here and it would act as your whitelist. When the backend is satisfied and that it knows what the function needs to do, that baseline behavior, it merges the runtime information with the static code analysis. And it'll actually reconfigure the function policy to prevent anything that is not on this whitelist from happening. And of course, you can always go onto the rules and exclusions tab and create a rules and exclusion that you wanna put in place. Next, we are going to go into IAM policies. So IAM policies here are showing um, the permissions that this function has. So everything that's listed here in green is all the permissions that it has. We have no exclusions at this point. Next, we're gonna go into our findings tab. The alerts really come from multiple places. So two things here that, that we're seeing, both of these are listed as high priority issues. Um, the first one that we're seeing here is a CVE alert. So I can click on the CVE alert and it shows me the dependencies uh, of the code that the Lambda is using. So here I can see that there is a Node.js um, packet. I can see that it's built on a JavaScript object. And then if I wanna learn more about information about this attack, I can open it up and it'll take me to the NIST website where I could learn additional information on this different attack type. Next, as another alternative here, I can also look at credential utilization. And here, when I'm investigating this, I can see that the Lambda function has credentials that are hard-coded as part of the code itself. So hard-coded um, credentials might open up this function for credential leaking in some major different attack types that have been used from hard-coding um, credentials uh, in, in the news recently. So here I can see that sensitive data could leak out and I can look and I can see the code that is being used, the value and, and where it is in the line of the code being used. So I can actually go in and I can make the changes to the code itself to correct this from becoming an issue. I can also look at threat and security events that are happening. So here I can see that there is a code injection attack that happened and I can see that CloudGuard blocked that attack. I can also see the environment and the region of where it occurred. And I have information on the injection attack type. The critical piece for this is the ability to have this ability into a ever-changing serverless microservice environment to create automated profiles to offer enhanced security while stopping and blocking attacks that could jeopardize your security operation and your cloud deployment as a whole. 